many MSPs struggle with understanding how much margin they should be targeting and many more don't understand the difference between margin and markup. Thankfully, it's just math. So today we're going to be covering the difference between margin and markup, how markup relates to margin, what your ideal margin percentages should be, and a way to build your markup to hit those ideal margins. So that's what we're going to cover, and let's head out in the ramble. The idea for today's video came up from an early version of my finance course that I teach. And somebody was asking me about markup and how it relates and what, what they should be marking their products up to. I didn't really have an answer, but I knew something. So the first thing I said, well, you know, markup is you know usually more than your margin because of kind of how you calculate it. And, and if you want to get 50% margin, you need 100% markup, right? And I, and, I, and I also knew that if you needed 20% margin, you need 25% markup. And that kind of just kind of glossed over it. And I kind of just said, kind of gave them some, some generality they accepted the answer, but thankfully, uh, it was a four-week class, so I was able to come back and clean it up the following week, and uh, and then this has been a, a video topic I wanted to get into ever since I started this. So that's what we're talking about today, margin versus markup. First, let's talk about gross profit for a minute. I'll actually throw a link up above because I talked about gross profit in my gross margin video from a few videos ago. It's important to understand what gross profit is because it kind of leans into some of this other stuff. So gross profit is simply the revenue minus the cost of goods sold. All right, and so then we've also covered margin before so margin or gross margin is revenue minus your cogs or your gross profit divided by your revenue multiplied by a hundred that gets your gross margin percent markup is revenue minus cogs or gross profit divided by your cogs multiplied by 100. That's why there's a difference between margin and markup. The biggest reason why you should care about markup is it allows you to get to your end price faster. If you know your targeted margin, then knowing the related markup price just gets you there faster from an equation, right? So let's say you wanted to, you're selling something that costs you 250 bucks and you want to figure out your margins on it or you're missing, you want to make be 20% margin on it. You'd have to do a, a fair amount of math to figure that out. Well, knowing that your 20% margin is really 25% markup, you take your $250, you multiply that by your markup percentage, which is 25% in this case, and that gets you the, the markup dollar figure. You add that back to cogs, cogs again, and that gets you your end result. That's as quick as it gets. So that's one of the reasons why knowing this is important. So next logical question is, how do I calculate markup and put it into practice? The simple and easiest way is to actually have a table. So there's a number of simple markups that are worth pointing out, and I'll just make your life a little easier. The first one is if you were looking for a 10% margin, that's 11.1% markup. 20% margin is 25% markup. 30% margin is 42.9% markup. So as you can see, as margin increases, markup increases quite a bit. 40% margin is 66.7% percent markup and 50 percent margin is a hundred percent markup if you have your targeted margin the formula to generate your targeted markup is one divided by in parentheses one minus your margin percent and parentheses minus one that equals your markup so with all the talk about markup and margins and all those things you might wonder what should i be targeting for my margins on the different lines of business there's a healthy dose of it depends here but i think uh, there's some pretty good generality so the first thing is let's talk about hardware software sales kind of that hard goods side of the world and you should be targeting somewhere between 20 and 25 percent i've seen a number of msps get into the 30s at this point but know that 20 to 20 to 25 percent is pretty solid now when it comes to the cloud side of the world there's sort of two different sectors here the first is the microsoft stuff right microsoft has a fairly rate lock markup and margin so you're probably in that somewhere between 12 and 18 percent as kind of what i'm seeing on a, on a regular basis so know that that's kind of just is what it is now the rest of your margins as it relates to cloud stuff your edr and your spam filter and all those things are usually somewhere in that 50 percent range so know that when you add them all together you probably land in that 30 to 35 percent on a pretty regular basis now, when you think about service, I like to recommend that folks kind of aim for that 50 to 60%, a little more if you can get it. I've seen MSPs north of 70, 75%. But the, the big thing here is that you hit the margins on purpose. You don't want to hit them by accident. Uh, said differently, you should be aiming between 50 and 60%. Again, a little more if you can. But if it's a little bit less and you're doing that on purpose because you've overstaffed or something like that and you did that on purpose, cool. If you are a little bit less than that and you don't know why, that's something to go digging into, right? So there's there's some, some context there. All of that said, if your margins are fine and your EBITDA or net profit is doing pretty well and you're going to elect to take a little bit less margin on something, that's not the end of the world either, right? Again, this is all about being deliberate about your finance and those kinds of things. When you have more margin and you have more profit, you can do some more things with that money. So 
go out there and get your finances healthy. And uh, thanks for coming on this roundabout with me. And I hope to see you on the next one.